Well, friends, good evening and welcome to our service uh, this evening, coming from Tain and Fern Free Church. Uh, this is just our second online broadcast. Uh, needs must. We're in a situation that we've not been in before, as you are as well, and uh, we are dealing with that as we are able. So uh, bear with us if there are any glitches or hitches. Uh, we want to come together to worship the Lord and uh, to sing praise to him and to pray and to read his word and to ponder it for some time. So we're going to begin our service this evening uh, by singing together from Psalm 46. Psalm 46a, that's a Sing Psalms version. Some of you may have a psalm book. If so, it's on page uh, 59. If not, the words will come up on your screen. We're going to sing Psalm 46. We're going to sing verses 1 to 6. God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present aid. And therefore, though the earth gives way, we will not be afraid. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 6, to God's praise. Let's now bow our heads in a word of prayer. Let us call on God's name in prayer. Lord, we realise that our lives are very different this Sunday, maybe from what they were just a week ago or just a few days ago. Uh, we are living, Lord, in a, in a world that is constantly changing, but we see the pace of change being ramped up so quickly just over these last few days and as we uh, seek Lord to um, adjust to all the changes that have taken place maybe in our own lives in our own families in our circumstances and in our work Lord we pray that you would help us that you would be with us we thank you Lord for these words that we've been singing 
that remind us that God is our refuge and our strength an ever present help in time of trouble and Lord we may have lived our lives with little or no reference to you but now we're realizing Lord that we need your help we're out of our depth we're out of our comfort zone we have uh, many fears flooding into our minds much anxiety but Lord we thank you that your word encourages us to cast all our cares on you and assures us, Lord, that you care for us. And so we pray today, Lord, for those who stand in particular need of you. We remember, Lord, those who are sick in our own nation and uh, right across the world. Uh, some of them, Lord, who may be frail and elderly and for whom this uh, illness is, is life-threatening. We commit them to you, Lord, and all family and friends who are worried about them. And we pray uh, this evening, Lord, for those uh, working in our health service, those, Lord, who are uh, endangering maybe their own lives as they seek to care for others. We thank you, Lord, for their commitment. We thank you, Lord, for these gifts of care uh, that you have given to some, uh, which maybe not all have, but we thank you, Lord, for those who dedicate their lives to helping others and to saving others, and we pray that you'll help them. We know that many of them will be working long hours and may be weary in their work. We ask, Lord, that you would give them the strength and the stamina that they need. Bless, Lord, our elderly. Bless those who may be lonely because they've had to uh, self-isolate. Uh, bless our young people as well, Lord. We realize uh, that for some of them, the times are uncertain. Those of them who may be preparing uh, to leave home later this year to go and study and now aren't sure, Lord, whether they will have the grades uh, or not to do that. So we pray, Lord, where there is uncertainty, that you would uh, still us and calm us and uh, help us, Lord, to wait for you and to look uh, to you. And we pray for those in authority over us, Lord. We realize that their task is not an easy one. We realize, Lord, that they're having to make major decisions on a daily basis and sometimes several times a day. So we pray for our Prime Minister and Westminster and our First Minister in Holyrood uh, and, and all our uh, elected representatives, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that we see them working together in this time of crisis, and we pray that you'll help them. And we thank you, Lord, for seeing among them a desire uh, and a determination to seek to save as many lives as possible. And we pray, Lord, that as a church we would be following uh, that uh, thinking as well. Uh, we realize, Lord, that for some it's been difficult to see services being suspended and to not being able to worship together physically uh, in a church building. But Lord, we too have that same great desire for, for the good of others. Uh, we are called on to love our neighbor as ourselves and we wouldn't endanger our own lives and therefore we ought not to endanger others uh, by seeking to meet together when it may not be appropriate uh, to do that. So we pray that you would bless us. Uh, lead us, Lord, in our services as we adjust to a different way of worshipping you. We pray, Lord, for those uh, in their own homes uh, looking at a, a screen or a PC or a phone and uh, wanting, Lord, to worship you together. We pray that we would sense our togetherness, though we may be apart and though we may be worshipping you as individuals uh, dotted here, there and everywhere. Help us, Lord, to be able to worship you collectively and to praise your name. So be with us, Lord. Lead us uh, through this service and help us on this day, a day that has been set aside, and particularly this evening, set aside to pray uh, for the situation with the coronavirus. Lord, help us to make time uh, to bring this situation before you and to plead for our nation and for our world at this time of uncertainty. We thank you, Lord, that though the situation may seem uncertain to us, there is no such uncertainty to you. You know the end from the beginning. You know all that is taking place and will take place. So help us, Lord, to trust you and to believe that you are a good God, a God who does all things well. So be with us and lead us into your truth as we read it together. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher and our guide as we ponder it for some time. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I'm going to read God's word now from the Old Testament and from the book of Psalms and Psalm 46. Uh, 
Psalm 46, <clears throat> let's read God's word. The title of the psalm says, For the director of music of the sons of Korah, according to Alamoth, a song. God is a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad to the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Amen. This is the word of God and we trust and pray that he will follow it with his own blessing. I want to ponder with you just for a while uh, the opening verse of that psalm. We may touch on some other verses in the psalm, but particularly the opening words of Psalm 46, where we read this. God is a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. We have here a psalm that tells us what to do when trouble comes. And trouble comes to each of us uh, as individuals at different times in our lives. But currently, trouble has come to all of us at the same time. We find ourselves in a situation that has no parallel in living memory. No school, no sport, no exams, no church, at least not as we knew it. And a huge percentage of the population are self-isolating. For many, these are days of great anxiety and maybe even panic. So many things we thought were secure and reliable have been shaken. And nothing seems certain anymore. Where can you turn in such a situation? Well, it seems like this psalm here, Psalm 46, was penned in the middle of some pretty major upset. It speaks of the earth giving way, and the mountains falling into the sea. It's a picture of great upheaval, of serious trouble. So where can you go in times of trouble? Where can help be found? Who can we depend on? These are great questions to be asking, and I hope that we can find some answers this evening as we study God's word together. Now I'm no artist, but I've been told that if you're ever painting a woodland scene or, or some kind of dense forest, that you should always include a path through the trees, a way out. Otherwise the person who studies the painting begins to feel trapped in the scenery and uh, they need to see a way out. And I believe that this psalm we're considering here this evening, Psalm 46, shows us a way out. Maybe you feel trapped within your own four walls. Maybe you feel trapped by fear that you might succumb to this virus. Or maybe you just feel trapped by anxiety and uncertainty about how things are going to pan out in all of this. Well, here God speaks words of reassurance. To us. So I want to mention three things that this psalm eh, tells us. It tells us that God is our refuge in times of trouble. It tells us secondly that God is our strength in times of trouble. And it tells us thirdly that God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. So we'll look at these three things and then we'll try and draw it all together and think before we finish about what does all this mean for us. God is our refuge, God is our strength, God is our ever-present help, 
And then what this all means for us. So the first of these, God is a refuge in times of trouble. Now a refuge is a place of safety, a place of security. It's a stronghold. And you and I might have our own refuge. Where do you go when life gets too much? When the pressure really ramps up? Do you run to some place? Do you go to some person? Or is it some thing that you resort to? Now I did say that a refuge is very often a place of safety and security. But sometimes the things we resort to when the pressure piles up are maybe not safe and certainly not secure. But it might also be the case that your usual refuge is no longer an option due to the restrictions that the coronavirus has brought in on people's movements. So where can you go? Who can you turn to? Well, this psalm tells us clearly that God is our refuge. God is our refuge. So what does that imply? Well, a refuge is not just something that you think about or study or observe or even compliment. It's something that you must enter. There's no security or safety outside of a refuge. Only when you're inside And God will not be a refuge to us unless we take refuge in him. We need to go to him. We need to run to him. We need to trust him. There's another scripture that says this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. There is safety and security. But only when you're trusting the Lord. Now, people will say, well... I'll do that when things get really serious. Well, how do you know when things are going to get really serious? Trouble seldom comes with an announcement beforehand. It comes suddenly. It comes unexpectedly. And the only way to be safe is to be sure that you're in the refuge already. To have put your trust in God and be relying on him before things get really serious. Later in the psalm, God is described not just as a refuge, but also as a fortress. We read these words, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Now a fortress is actually much more than simply a refuge. A refuge is a place that you can hide in until the threat is over. But a fortress is actually a place from which you can begin to fight back from which you can begin to deal with the things that threaten your security. And God is like that. He is a fortress. He's not just someone you can go to to hide in and hope for the best, but he is instead one who will equip you and enable you to face the threats and the uncertainties that life brings. So that's the first thing we see in this psalm. It tells us that God is a refuge in times of trouble. But then secondly, we see here also that God is our strength in times of trouble. The psalm says, God is our refuge and our strength. Now, one of the reasons that coronavirus has shaken us so much is that here in the UK, life has been fairly secure. Now, I know that's a bit of a generalization, and I know this isn't true for everyone, but most folk have a reasonable standard of living. Most of us have pretty much all the things that we really need to get by. By and large, we are self-sufficient. And self-sufficiency brings a measure of reassurance. But now that security has been shaken, badly shaken, jobs have been lost, businesses are going bust, holidays have been cancelled, even some staple foods are in short supply. In the shops, due to panic buying, as fear creeps in. And while we might feel strong in ourselves when things are going well, that strength can soon vanish when trouble comes. And we begin to get weak. And we begin to get fearful. But you know, our weakness can also be a blessing if it causes us 
to turn to the Lord. This psalm tells us that God is our strength in times of trouble. He takes away our fear. The next two verses of this psalm, verses 2 and 3, say this, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. That's a description of chaos. The earth giving way, and the mountains falling into the sea. It's like the foundations of of the whole world have collapsed. And in our current crisis, it may well feel for you like the foundations of your whole life have been shaken, if not even collapsing all around you. All the things that you thought were secure, they begin to come tumbling down one after another, after another. And you may feel powerless to intervene. You can do nothing to stop it. That, friends, is why you need the strength that God can give. And he gives it to us in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the trial. When I lived back in the islands, I used to love going down to the shore at the bottom of the croft if it was a particularly wild or stormy day. And there I used to watch the huge Atlantic rollers breaking on the cliffs with such power. And it was awesome to watch that. But it would be a very different story if you were actually caught in the middle of it at sea. And that's the kind of picture this psalm describes here. The psalmist talks about the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. And yet he goes on to say, I will not fear. I will not fear. And he can say that since God is his strength in times of trouble. Fear. Fear makes us act irrationally. That's why we see people buying all the pasta they can get their hands on. It's why they're amassing jumbo packs of toilet roll. It's fear that's behind all of that. It leaves people feeling vulnerable. The writer of this psalm tells us clearly that he doesn't fear. He doesn't fear because God gives him strength. You know, the strength God gives us is beyond anything we can muster within ourselves. There's another verse in the Bible where the prophet Isaiah says this. He says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God is a great source of strength. And he's there for us when we realize our own weakness and when we begin to rely on him. And we needn't fear. We needn't fear if we're trusting the Lord because we know that we're in his hands. And there's no better place that we could be than that. Do you know, people talk about a safe pair of hands. There's no safer hands than these. To be in the hands of God. So that's our second point. That God is our strength in times of trouble. So we've seen that God is our refuge in times of trouble. We've seen that God is our strength in times of trouble. Thirdly, God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. So the opening words of the psalm say, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. It means that God is Always there. Self-isolation brings with it many challenges. If an entire family has to isolate, it's now for a fortnight. And, and, and there can be tension in a large group being stuck together day after day. But much worse surely is to isolate alone. And that's a situation many people find themselves in, particularly those who are elderly or those who are in a high-risk group, no one can visit, and they fear venturing out. And loneliness can easily take a hold in a situation like that. But this psalm reminds us that the Lord will never leave you. He is, says the psalmist, ever present. He's always there with those 
who put their trust in him. And it doesn't matter whether it's day or whether it's night. God is always there. You know, the Bible tells us that he never slumbers and he never sleeps. And so that means when you go to your bed at night, you can hand all your anxiety to him because he cares for you. You don't need to lie awake worrying because God stays awake caring. Can you not trust such a God with your life? Can you not entrust your soul to him? The current COVID-19 crisis has meant that many people have to make some kind of sacrifice. Now, most of these things are simply an inconvenience, such as having to stay in the house. You may have seen some posts on social media that highlight this. There's one that says our forefathers went to war to save lives. Surely you can stay on the couch to do so. There's another doing the rounds from NHS staff saying, we're staying at work to protect lives. Can you not stay at home to do the same? Our sacrifices, if we make any, are tiny in comparison to the sacrifice of Jesus. He gave his life so that others would live. He willingly died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin so that we could get right with God. And the very fact that we today can have God as our refuge, God as our strength, and God as our ever-present help is all because of the sacrifice of Jesus. It's through him that we have access to the God who will never leave us, who is ever-present. The famous writer C.S. Lewis said this. He said, life with God is not immunity from difficulty, but peace within the difficulties. You see, we need to be clear. Trusting God will not remove every threat, but it does equip you to meet the challenges. And it does mean that he is with you and accompanies you as you go through them. So that was the third thing then. God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Let's try and draw all this together though. What does all this mean for us? Well, near the end of this psalm, we we read some amazing words where it says this, be still and know that I am God. In the midst of the chaos that is all around us, as we deal with the greatest global crisis most of us have ever experienced, this psalm instructs us to be still and trust in the Lord. God is saying to you and to me today, be still. Stop stressing. Stop panicking. Stop pacing up and down and let God still your heart. Stop what you're doing. Turn off Netflix. Get off Facebook. And allow God to speak to you through the Bible. The writer of this psalm, he thinks of the worst case scenario where everything he ever thought was secure was shaken in a terrifying way. His whole world was turned on its head. He pictures the earth giving way and the mountains toppling into the sea. It was sudden, it was dramatic, and it was extremely unsettling. And yet he can say, I will not fear. I will not fear. And his reason for being able to say that is that God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in trouble. Friends, we're in trouble right now. Maybe your world has been turned upside down by all that has taken place over these last few days. And none of us know how this situation might yet develop or where it will end. But God knows. And he is in control of all of it. And therefore the only secure place for you and for me is to put our trust in him. You know, times of crises in our lives, they can either draw us to God or they can drive us away from him. They neither have one effect or the other. Just like the sun in the sky, it will harden clay but it will soften wax. 
We could go one way or another, depending on how we face this crisis. So which will it be for you? If you run from God, where will you go? Instead, call out to him. Flee to his fortress. And there you will find an open door, welcoming arms, and a safe pair of hands. Remember these words that Jesus spoke with such great compassion. He said this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Well, won't you come today? And if you do, you will find in him a refuge, a strength, and an ever-present help. Amen. May God bless to us these thoughts on his word. Let's bow our heads again in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the invitation that we find in your word to come to you. We may have spent the best part of our lives running from you. We may have convinced ourselves that we had no need of God. Lord, sometimes when our lives are shaken up, when the foundations are rocked, and when uncertainty crowds in upon us, and fear envelops us, we realize, Lord, that we need a strength that is out with ourselves, that we need one who will take care of us, who will be with us, who will give us strength, who will keep us safe. So help us, Lord, not just to look to you, or even to admire you, but to take refuge in you and to trust you with our lives, with our souls, with everything. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to finish our service. We're going to sing in Psalm 73, in the Scottish Psalter, Psalm 73. If you have a blue sandbook, where it's on page 316. We're going to sing near the end of the psalm. Well, we're going to sing the last six verses of the psalm, actually, from verse 23 down to verse 28. Psalm 73 at verse 23. Nevertheless, continually, O Lord, I am with thee. Thou dost me hold by my right hand, and still upholdest me. Psalm 73 from verse 23 to the end of the psalm. You can join in and sing.
Let's conclude with a benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.